Number seven, what is the maximum magnitude of the force on an aluminum rod with a 0.1 micro coulomb charge that you pass between the poles of a 1.5 Tesla permanent magnet at a speed of five meters per second? Okay, right, what is the direction of this force? Okay, so um, so basically what we have to do here is um, we have to apply uh, this particular formula over here on the top right. All right, what this says is that the maximum force, or the, I shouldn't even say maximum force, let me just say the force acting on a moving charge, okay, the force acting on a moving charge through a magnetic field will equal the magnitude of that charge multiplied by the velocity of that charge multiplied by the strength of the magnetic field multiplied then by the sine of the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field, okay? Now, if velocity, charge, and magnetic field doesn't change, all right, how do we get then a maximum value for the force on the right-hand side if I'm allowed, on the left-hand side, excuse me, if I'm allowed to alter the angle, theta? In other words, think about the possibilities of the sign of a value there, of an angle. For example, what's the sign of zero? Well, that's equal to zero. So wait a minute. The sine of zero is zero, meaning the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field looked like this. Here's the velocity, here's the magnetic field. They have zero degree angle between them because they're pointing in the same direction. Um, this whole thing would just be zero, all right? There is no perpendicular component to it. So that whole thing is just zero. So then what would represent a maximum now value for this right-hand side of the equation? Well, as this angle starts increasing, in other words, if I were to leave this picture, let me see if I can now begin to, yeah. So let me, let me try to do this. So let's pretend the magnetic field is pointing to the right, okay? We got a, some magnetic field here pointing to the right. That's our B. And let's, let me draw in now my velocity, okay? Right here, this velocity vector, I'm missing the other, I'm missing the other side, but that should be okay. Actually, you know what? I'm going to pretend it is pointing, pretend it is, how am I gonna do this? Because it's not gonna rotate nicely. Let me do it like this, okay? Let me point that, uh, that dot will represent the, t actually, you know what, you know what, guys? You know what, guys? There we go, ready? We're gonna do it, we're gonna go old school here. We're gonna go old school, so. Let's resize this. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is with this velocity vector here pointing to the right, there is no angle now, or the angle between the uh, magnetic field B and that velocity is zero. They're pointing in the same direction. But now what happens if I start to rotate this, right? If you notice now, the angle now between, so let me actually superimpose it, right? As you can clearly see, these two are overlapping one another. And therefore, the angle between those lines is zero, right? I didn't mean to do that. One second. So now what happens, though, when I start to rotate now this? Notice the angle now between them starts to increase, right? And it'll increase to a maximum now when this velocity vector is perpendicular to the magnetic field. And the reason why is because the sine of 90 degrees now, if I were to plug in a little 90, this is one. That's the maximum value sine can obtain. One. It's somewhere, a sine will be somewhere between zero and one. So when they're asking for the maximum magnitude of the force, what they're really saying is calculate the force when the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field is 90 degrees. That's what they're asking. Okay, in other words. So with that armed, with armed with that knowledge, all we now have to do is plug in the values. The charge they gave us here was 0.1 micro coulombs. You know we need that in coulombs, so that's 0.1 times n 10 to the minus sixth. The velocity here is in meters per second, so that's fine. We don't have to change anything. The magnetic field, by the way, is measured in Tesla, not the car, but for the scientist, okay, that actually did a lot of study, that studied magnetism, all right? Um, but in any case, um, yeah, he was a scientist at one point. Um, he wasn't just a car. So... That is the right value here for the magnetic field times in the sine of 90 degrees. You know that's just one, so that'll just can't, you know, basically cancel. It's just one, so who cares? So all you gotta do now is take out the calculator and plug it in. 
So what do we get? 0 0.1 times then uh, 10 to the minus 6, then multiply by 5, multiply by 1.5. And it looks like we get a value of about 7.5 times 10 to the minus 7th. So 7.5, I guess 3 sig figs times 10 to the minus 7th, and that will be in terms of newtons, because we're talking about force. There you go, guys. All right, hopefully that helps. I appreciate it very much. If uh, you could subscribe, all right, or even hit that like button. Even better yet, tell your classmates. And uh, I feel like I'm a little out of breath from this problem. That's probably not a good thing. Um, anyway, have a great day, guys. Take care.